If your rice pudding doesn't turn out extra creamy like the one you see here, then you have to try this old-fashioned recipe. It's so easy to make in about 20 minutes on your stovetop, and it only costs about a fraction of the rice pudding you buy in the store. This tastes just like the kind that you would order in an old-school diner. Once you make this rice pudding, you might never bother with another recipe again. All right, before we begin, you want to choose the right pot for making rice pudding or any pudding. Make sure you use a pot that either has a nice thick bottom or at least has a very well insulated bottom. And you want to make sure you choose something that has a good reputation, something that doesn't burn things. I'm going to start by adding four cups of milk. And this is going to make enough rice pudding for four people. You can easily half this recipe if you only want to make enough for two. You can double it if you want to make enough for eight people. It all works. Next, I'm going to add half a cup of water. And not only does that give you a chance to sort of rinse out your cup, but the water is also going to help compensate for a little bit of evaporation during cooking. All right, now I'm going to add half a cup of rice, but this isn't just any rice. This is arborio rice. It's also known as Italian style rice sometimes. It's a very short grain rice that releases a lot of starch, which makes it favorable for making rice pudding. Let me show you the difference between that rice and regular long grain rice. So this is the rice that you're probably making on a regular basis to make any type of stir fry or whatever. Here's the two side by side in comparison. And you can see that this one here is a lot shorter. And this one is not going to release nearly as much starch. You can still use this regular long grain rice, everyday rice but it's not going to be nearly as creamy. It'll still be good and it will work, but if you have a choice, use the Arborio rice. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. And last but not least, I have here about a quarter teaspoon of salt, which I'm just kind of eyeballed. I'm gonna bring this to a boil over medium heat and you don't have to watch this constantly. You know, if your heat is controlled, you can turn around and do something else, but be sure to stir it frequently just to make sure it isn't burning on the bottom. Of course, anytime you're cooking something with this much milk, there is a little bit of a risk of it burning on the bottom, and you definitely don't want that, especially when you're making pudding, because then you get all little brown flecks all through your, your pudding, and then it's not really very good. Of course, if that does happen and it's a smooth pudding, you could easily just strain it, but you can't really do that with rice pudding or you'd lose all the rice. So here we are, it is starting to boil now. So I can see a few of the bubbles already starting in there. And you're gonna see how creamy this rice pudding turns out. And we're not gonna add any starchy thickeners like cornstarch or flour. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But because this rice pudding is thickened entirely by the rice itself and egg yolks, it turns out extra, extra creamy. The creamiest you've ever had. You'll still want to stir it every now and then, even while it's simmering, just to make sure that nothing's burning or no rice is sticking to the bottom of the pot. That's why it's so important to use a good pot for any type of pudding you make. Let it simmer for about 20 to 25 minutes. You want that rice to be completely falling apart. And I have been stirring it from time to time just to prevent any scorching or any rice from sticking on the bottom of the pot. You might also notice some scum forming on the top like this. It's actually not scum, that's really good butter fat from the milk. I should mention that I'm using whole milk here, full fat milk. Just stir that right back in. All right, while that's simmering, I'm gonna take two eggs and separate them. I'm gonna put the whites into here and the yolks into here, and we only need the yolks, so do be sure you save those whites. And I know there's many, probably easier ways to separate eggs, but I'm a little bit old school when it comes to cooking. Let's use those shells. No need to dirty any other dishes to do this. Now I'm gonna take these yolks and add in about four to six tablespoons of sugar. And that's really gonna depend on your personal taste, how sweet you want your pudding to be. You know, anywhere from four to six tablespoons should do it. You might even want to add more if you're a real sweet tooth, but here I added a total of six tablespoons. I find that that's kind of the sweet spot for this recipe. 
no pun intended. So just mix that together until it's nice and smooth like this. Should be kind of creamy looking. Now let's take a look at our pudding. Huh, wow, what did I tell you about that fat forming on the top? And this is exactly what it should look like. We're in really good shape here. This has been cooking for about 15 minutes now and we're almost there, but not quite. Just another few more minutes. All right, now this has been about 20 minutes of cooking now, and this is what the surface should look like. See how on the surface, when you skim it, you can really tell that there's rice in there. It's not so liquidy anymore. As soon as it looks like that, I'm just gonna turn off the heat and I'm going to temper this egg yolk and sugar mixture into the pudding. But you wanna turn it off when you do this because it's a lot easier. And if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you probably know the whole story. You add a little bit of that hot pudding into the egg yolks and you just mix them really well like this. We're raising the temperature of those egg yolks slowly so that when we add them into the hot pudding, they're not gonna turn into scrambled eggs. So I like to do, I don't know, maybe just three quarters of a cup worth or so into there. You don't need a lot. So now this feels kind of warm. So if I had put this in straight cold, it, it would have been a disaster. It would get all curdled and you'd have scrambled eggs in your pudding. And now I'm going to bring it back to a gentle simmer for about a minute or two. That's mostly just to cook those egg yolks, make sure that they're safe to eat. And like I said, only a minute or two. We're totally using the starch from the rice and the egg yolks to thicken this. You should only be seeing little bubbles here and there at this point to cook those egg yolks. And you might be looking at this right now and thinking, gee, that's not thick enough. I like my rice pudding a lot thicker than that but just trust the process. It should still look very runny like this. As it cools, it's going to get much thicker. So it's been about two minutes or so of this gentle simmering of those egg yolks. I'm just gonna take this off the heat now and we're gonna add two more ingredients. And those two ingredients are two tablespoons of butter and good quality vanilla extract. And of course, I'm just measuring with my heart. So I'm just gonna mix that in. And this is looking fantastic. This is exactly what this should be looking like right now. I know it looks very thin and soupy, but this literally just came off the heat. If you ever notice that sometimes rice pudding gets too thick as it cools that you can almost slice it, this isn't gonna turn out that way. You can still serve it warm because it is thickening by the minute now, but when it cools completely, it's going to be just the right creamy texture that we all love in rice pudding. This is what it's gonna look like after an overnight chill in the fridge. You can see that it doesn't solidify into a brick. You're not gonna have to add any milk or cream to make it creamy again. It stays super creamy the creamiest rice pudding you'll ever make. I'm gonna hit that with a little bit of cinnamon. So just a little shake right there. Ooh, that's nice. Oh wow, look at that. I'm pretty sure that when you make this rice pudding, it's probably going to be the only recipe you'll ever make. That vanilla flavor is just so perfect. And don't forget that you can get the complete recipe by clicking the link in the description. Wow, you're just gonna love it.